what are we thinking about 2024 so far in terms of is this a year that has living up to expectations or has it not you know i think it really kind of comes down to the individual for me i think this year has been a year that i spent a lot of time on what would be considered like retro stuff more so than the newer stuff yeah i played some newer stuff too uh some of it's okay I've been largely kind of disappointed with what we've gotten this year, and, you know, I guess that just kind of is what it is, but at the end of the day, it does kind of look like maybe the second last part of the year could be something great, um, you know, I, I hope so anyway, uh, you know, it would be nice to see that actually happen, and, you know, for me, I think PlayStation has a lot to do with kind of salvaging the year. Uh, because I would love to see them be able to go out there and actually go, okay, well, PS5 Pro is actually something uh, that, that's coming, and, you know, it's going to be able to do this, this, and this, and this. And so there's actually two parts of this. For one thing that I wanted to talk about was the certifications that developers had. Uh, that day has come and gone, so now uh, developers are actually putting in the certifications for the ps5 pro games which you know that's a good thing uh, because you want your game certified obviously if we're kind of looking at a year where a lot of games are going to be coming in uh, the holiday season or whatever i think that makes the most sense you know you gotta okay have your certifications cool uh you know we can kind of move on to the next point or whatever and like i said so that's pretty nice to see uh you know for me personally i think that it's going to come around to you know are we excited by what's actually announced i think some of the issues with you know is this going to be something that actually releases um this year or whatever a lot of people were kind of speculating that kind of stuff for me it was never really much of a question because it made the most sense to release it this year because it's the holiday and people just buy stuff around the holidays just to buy it so you know that's something that you can kind of look forward to but one of the big rumors is and take it with a grain of salt right now you know all developers have to support it supposedly and that includes microsoft so the interesting thing that we're kind of hearing right now is that the new call of duty black ops 6 is going to fully support the ps5 pro so think about that for a second uh you're gonna have microsoft which owns the actual game itself right they own uh call of duty and you know they have technically the world's most powerful console until the pro launches anyway but you know they have this console and it's gonna get smoked by the competing console right so yeah even though sony doesn't have a you know a, a a marketing deal with call of duty anymore or anything like that we still have this weird situation where um they do have sort of this thing that that's going to be able to play xbox games better and i get that call of duty technically um excuse me isn't a an, an xbox game quote unquote but you know it is still looked at as something um you know kind of along those lines where it is a first party xbox console game or whatever you know so yeah it's going to come to playstation but the fact that this game is going to look and perform best on ps5 i think that says a lot for sort of what's what's happening and you know i i think that we need to see some some of that stuff kind of change a little bit from um from sony you know like sony they're going out of their way to make sure that they kind of embarrass uh, Microsoft and they're actually being able to kind of pull that off in my opinion because we're seeing these games actually look and perform best on um, PlayStation so to me it's kind of funny to see that kind of come about the way that it has but I'm not at all kind of surprised and you know I think that it's just one of those things where we look at this and we go okay um, this is just one of those things that, that kind of comes up and, and, and you see fans kind of look to it as, as a reason to buy one. So, you know, honestly, uh, it, it, it's just one of those things that we kind of have to look at. So, again, um, you know, I'm kind of looking at this thing and I'm kind of saying, you know, I hope that Sony has this, this great console that's going to blow us all away because, you know, at the end of the day... I feel like it has been a little bit lackluster. And I don't mean to sound down or depressed or anything like that, but 
um, you know, I'm sure many of you kind of share some of my sentiments about this. You know, in general, um, this generation hasn't exactly been what it's all cracked up to be in. So someone who has access to a lot of old school stuff like me, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, and I'll, and I'll be playing something and, and, you know, maybe on my 360, maybe of my PS3 or whatever, maybe something even older than that, maybe a Dreamcast game or an original Xbox game. Lately, I've been playing some of those and I'm just having fun with it. And I'm like, man, this is fun. And then you just, it sort of hits you, right? Like, man, gaming sure has gone to crap lately, right? Like, I, I can't help it. There's still some decent stuff, but it's like... Stuff that I would normally look forward to, right? Like this Star Wars game. Um, it looks like it's got Ubisoft stench all over it, though, right? Like uh, you have this kind of semi kind of open world Star Wars game, and it's, uh, you know, uh, you, and it's got a, uh, it's, it's going to be about smugglers or whatever. It looks like this game should have been Han Solo the game, to be honest with you. It should have been a game about Han Solo and Chewbacca, right? Let's just be real about it. But Ubisoft being Ubisoft, they have to do the whole DEI thing and they destroy it by taking this beautiful model who's the voice actress and turning her into uh, a big man-chinned ugly character and the game looks like it's running like crap because Ubisoft like like normal hires people who aren't necessarily the most skilled developers because they don't care about hey is this person skilled no this person checks a box and you know that it sucks that that's controversial but it shouldn't even be and i think it's becoming less controversial as the days pass but we just look at this stuff and it just blows my mind that you know we get when people wonder why games are taking so long you know you've got rocksteady who came out with great arkham games right arkham arkham city that's a that's an amazing game you know arkham asylum that really redefined the superhero genre arkham knight i thought was pretty good you know and then they come out with suicide squad which is just like the most garbage thing ever right like it's a games as a service type thing and it, you know sweet baby ink helped on this game and they gender swap mr freeze with a female and people go oh well in the comics but 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 no this is gender swap miss mr freeze with mrs freeze who is also a lesbian so you know again people developers are so obsessed with ticking these boxes that it doesn't really make any sense that they're not worrying about the fun factor of video games anymore and that is a real shame in and of itself i hope that we could get out of that man let's just get back to creating great games games that are fun for everyone uh you know like that's why the past is, is looked on with such favor right now right because games were fun you know anyway i would love to hear what you guys think about this stuff let me know rack them up crap gamer out